Hello. Hello. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another day on playing some Minecraft with Delenn. Um, we are going to be doing some choppity chop chop today, so hopefully things will work out fairly well. Um, just trying to remove a lot of the trees. We haven't got the place totally flat yet, but it's a good place to start. Um, so yeah, I did a little bit of flattening out by raising the edge of the system in such a way that we've got um, most of it is out of the road. How do I put that? And I had a bunch of uh, pillagers drop in on my head and such. So yeah, we've we've had some some interesting stuff going. On. I'm just making sure all the shelter. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's magenta. Just hoping that you're empty. Yeah. Okay, we're good. I think I got one axe. That, that's the good one. Tell me one. Okay. Got one other one I could steal from another place. I'm just filling up this shulker box because. I was turning all the cobblestone I was making with my cheap axes, or cheap pickaxes, into um, stone, stone, simply because I can then get rid of it. Like, I can store it, but I've got a cobblestone generator when I actually need it. So I've got... Um, the, I've got enough traders with the uh, trading hall that I actually find it more useful to have them as emeralds rather than anything else. So, yeah see uh i think i've got everything in place except for the spotify i hope that the um notification this morning will actually work um i did try and update it correctly but we'll see hmm. spotify is playing i personally can't hear it so i think i need to turn okay trying a new playlist this morning We'll have to see if that's any good. Are my game's a bit quiet and it's not on the right sound feed. Oh. That means game in. Okay, there we go. You should be hearing up watch pretty much everything. Ready to rock. Uh I forgot the chat that goes over the top of my screen. Wow. Must be Tuesday. So just filling people in, um, this morning, well actually last night, it's been a little noisy. Um, not bad, but noisy as in we've had some rainstorms. Thunder during the day, thankfully, but not at night. Good morning, Fantastic Sherlock Fox and PP Clerk. Uh, apologize for not seeing you guys come in. I vaguely heard it. Uh, as you can tell with the hellos this morning, um, that's just on my to-do list to put in the new new name. Oh, actually, on it. Um, but with the rain last night, we've had quite a bit. So precautionarily, oh, that's a word. There, there we go. Um, for precaution reasons, our city has declared a state of emergency. That just allows the, the water workers and, if need be, the evacuation control to fire up and pull people out of their neighborhoods if they have to. Um, our neighborhood is not at risk of that. We've got a, a very useful storm drain storm pond nearby. We don't have to worry about anything there. Um, plus, during the last major floods we had in 2013, while other parts of our city ended up rather heavily underwater, and the roads are a mess and stuff, um, ours stayed relatively dry. It wasn't that it didn't rain, it's just that we actually had stuff in place that worked pretty well. But we didn't need to worry about any of that stuff. But, um, yeah, our city roads are a bit of a mess again, and our mayor saying, yeah, don't worry, people, we got everything under control, but we just need to go into precaution mode to fire things up early so that we don't have the problems we did before. Um, the side effect of that from 
my point of view in a negative standpoint is just that um, our kids were scheduled weeks ago, I guess, for a, um, a canoeing course on the local reservoir, but because the city water reservoir, there's the gap. Mind the gap. Um, because it's a city water reservoir and the city was hearing from meteorologists in advance that th things were not looking good, um, then they dropped the water levels, which meant the cancellation of the canoe course. So, I mean, you know, a little disappointed, but I think the kids are better for it in terms of not having to, uh, you know, canoe on crummy water levels because it's not safe. There's, over the years, there's been some weird shoals and stuff that, that built up in the, in the sides of the reservoir, so it's probably a good thing that they didn't end up actually going. Am I here? Yeah, didn't miss anything. <laughs> Didn't miss anything super major before I fired up my own. Um, I'm trying a new microphone position in the hopes that it will... Get out of here. Nope, oh, nope, missed it. I'm trying a new microphone position in the hopes that it will um, alleviate some of the challenges I've had because when I get really interested in a game, I start leaning in and leaning in and leaning in and then I end up out of the microphone zone. Um, but the side effect of that is I just decided that I'm going to put it over top of what I would normally see for um, my chat screen in OBS, which just meant that it, I had to rely a little more heavily on the app that I had forgotten to start up. That's, that's the lens normal, normal derp. But anyways, with all this rain and stuff, um, even though I tried to get to bed earlier last night, it wasn't the best sleep. So I'm not saying, hey, I'm tired, it's more... That I rolled out of bed half hour before we were supposed to start. Thank heavens for fantastic Fox being willing to take the kids to school. Um, they are our kids are old enough. We, I think we talked about this last week. Our kids are old enough that they could walk themselves to school. They really get off on a better foot if um, parent takes them to school, walks with them. But yeah, fantastic Shot Fox did that for us this morning. Mm. Coffee. <laughs> Um, one of the things that has happened in absentia while we were away over the, the course of the weekend, like not even while I was not streaming over the course of the weekend, um, I dropped in on a, on a lovely player who was playing some Valheim, and I went on a Valheim addiction this weekend. Um, it's not horribly bad, as in it's just a video game, and I just didn't want to stop whatever it was. Um, tried another seed and, and totally enjoyed it, and you know, that sort of jazz. Anyway. Long story made short on that one, we had a fine person by the name of um, Kieran Chan follow us, so if anybody's familiar with them. They don't claim to be family friendly, and sometimes they're not. If, some, if something gets really exciting or whatever, I have heard a few S bombs, but um, their chat seems pretty chill, they seem pretty chill, and um, somebody in their chat had been watching me, which surprised the foe. Bit too short notice. No blow up or... Gotcha. Um, yeah, so, so somebody had been following me and I didn't even know it. Apparently they were watching one of my streams and hadn't had the chance to finish kind of thing and still recommended me. So I was kind of surprised by that. I'm still new enough at this whole thing that uh, I think I'll be a perma noob at streaming as well. You know, I, I jokingly claim that about Minecraft, but I think I will be streaming. Where are we? There we go. You know, it might help if I actually start in a corner. Then I know where I'm at. That would be maybe sensible. But in any case, yes. So Kieran decided to follow me, and I was already enjoying following them, so it was a nice, nice friendly tit for tat there. And, uh, yeah. I mentioned last week, I'm still De Death City in Belheim, although when I started a new seed with, with a new character, um, as I had been reading, it's uh, procedurally generated, sort of like this one is. But unlike Minecraft, where every world you start fresh, um, this one, you technically start fresh in terms of um, the seed itself and what you're seeing, but you're not actually starting fresh with your character. Belheim's a little different in that the character themselves are the ones that are doing the progression, not you. 
So while different seeds may or may not have the trophy hung from a boss to be able to get special abilities, um, the character themselves still has advanced. You've still geared them up, etc. And you can bounce them around from world to world and they take what's in their inventory with them. That was, that was a new one for me, is to have my inventory with me. So I tried bouncing into a world where I started on Wednesday and um, understandably had no idea of the map because that character wouldn't have known. Right? It's not the player that saves that character. So the character jumped in in the default spot, but um, they had everything with them and they picked up from the other world. So that was kind of nice. I didn't ruin things, but it does mean then that I have to be aware of which characters I play in which worlds. Um, so that I don't mess up things for streaming. Yeah. Anyhow. Um, but as a result of gaming addictions, I stayed up way, way too late for like the, I don't know how many nights in a row. Um, Saturday, was it Saturday morning or Sunday morning? Well, and I'm actually quite serious about that. I can't remember whether we had soccer the next day. I think I did. Anyways, one of those nights I actually saw the sun again and I'm sure. <laughs> You know, one of those things. So in order to be a functioning parent of grade school kids, I am actually working on ways of getting myself to calm down and shut down earlier to go with the gaming. Um, but yeah, it's those, those things where I'm trying to work on this whole sleep business. Um, I was listening to a video from Healthy Gamer, uh, Healthy Gamer GG, Dr. K, and uh, he was going on about... Um, but sorry, not going on. That's not a right way of putting it. He was talking about the history, as he understood it, from how we are, I guess, how we are uh, evolutionarily designed, and part of it is our brains are looking for chance to unwind and mentally start to process stuff before we go to bed. So it's not just dreaming; it's um, sort of the unwinding and random thoughts that you sort of have. Yeah random thoughts people have before you actually go to sleep and just sort of let your mind drift kind of deal and uh, apparently we seem to need that in such a way that our modern world that allows us to distract ourselves um prevents us from doing that and our brain our brains and bodies are going to insist on it whether we want it to or not so that just means that that portion of the time is still spent whether we like it or not and that detracts from our actual sleep either that or sometimes it'll affect our dreams and we may end up with weirder ones uh, it also plays into more people um, when they're waking up, having like, waking dreams as they're waking up, which I find if I'm in the middle of something uh, as a dream world, and then I suddenly have to wake up, whether it be an alarm or something else, um, I find that I don't feel rested. It feels more like a jolt, whereas if I do get the chance to unwind and I mentally deal with some of that before I go to bed, then in the morning I'll be waking up thinking about something that seems more sensible for the day. Like uh, on the weekend I'd wake up thinking about you know the game I'd been playing before I went to bed or um, a book or something I needed to do that weekend or whatever. So I woke up thinking about, hmm, I wonder how long it is till I get ready for my son's soccer game. And it turned out I was I misjudged it in my head by about an hour, but that worked out in my favor just because I was thinking about that when I woke up rather than. I don't know, some sort of bizarre whatever it was. Like this morning I woke up from a completely different world all of a sudden in a jolt and went, uh-oh, and had no idea what I was. Like it took me a second or two to even figure out where I was. So yeah, those sorts of days. Good. We have fantastic Sherlock Fox is being amazing. Oh, even though he's stuck in meetings this morning, he's still able to help us with some of our um, Unwelcome visitors. Very handy. But no, I figured with the build this morning, we are getting a lot closer. Um, part of the reason I drew out the border is so that I can see from anywhere that we're working whether I have to go down in that spot or build up. So I've done all the build up portion, but everywhere that is left, we need to go downwards. I just have to remember which side of the line I'm on. Um, but we have to go downwards to here, but we can see that we don't have very far to go in this area. Whereas in some of the other spots, it's quite a ways to go. If this F is your hero, well, he's mine too. <laughs> That's why I married him. 
Ugh. Yeah. I I can start to commiserate a little bit with uh, people in parts of the world like Australia, where they're just getting tons of rain and it's worth celebrating when you don't. We are talking this weekend, we got the first of our rainfall warnings, and they were saying by end of day, day not by end of the week, but by end of day Tuesday, I think we we're looking at possibly a good ballpark of about 14 inches, possibly more. Although Fantastic Shot Fox who can remind me whether or not that was Tuesday or whether that was actually just the weekend, and we're, we're under new warnings now. Which doesn't sound like a whole lot to, to areas that can handle it. Um, we're in a prairie zone, so what that actually means that our ground can't hold a whole lot before it gets to the point of saturation, and, and then the ground basically starts runoff, and the uh, things like areas start to flood simply because the ground just can't take anymore. So that's why we have to worry about that. I mean, one of the things our farmers complain about a lot is they say, not enough rain, not enough rain, but then they then they complain about this and go, too much rain, because it's all at once. And when the ground can't take it, then it, it starts to wash away and wash out. And that's not, geez, that's not helpful. But yeah, after 2013, when we had some pretty major floods, lots and lots of work has been done to try and mitigate that. Um, they're still, f still fighting about a floodplain area that they want to build more reservoirs on, but um, there are portions of our roads closed that are near the rivers, just while we have city crews building berms, temporary berms. It's kind of weird for a uh, prairie area to be thinking about building berms and stuff thing is that, um, yeah, basically, we, we, nobody wants to have the issues we had in 2013. Very expensive for everybody in the city, both in terms of um, time, damage, a lot of stuff. On the other hand, um, like farmers complain this is too much rain all at once. The uh, river sports people are saying, oh my goodness, it's amazing, we want, we want more because some of them love rafting or tubing or what you know canoeing whatever your favorite thing is but even for them they start start to often forget that not everybody is rapids trained and the problem with being in an area like this is when it does flood and anything and everything becomes a rapid i mean for those who want rapids training it works great like those people are actually going to be getting more business but that doesn't work for everyone. Are we? Did I bring? Oops. Ah, uh, yeah. Did I bring any scaffolding? No. Art. Okay. Okay. okay so, so we need to in this section still do a lot of uh, cut down. Not cut down. Sorry. Um, line flat. I just found that my inventory was filling up with random bits and bobs of trees, taking spots and not stacking to a full stack. So I figured, well, you know, let's just do a tree-only episode, and then we can get a better lay of the land, see where things are going. Um... While everybody tells me that it's bad form to say good morning to the lurkers, all I'm going to do is literally say that. It is hello and welcome to anybody who's choosing to lurk this morning. Um, not going to call out names. That's the part that people told me was really bad form. And that makes sense. I totally agree now that I understand that. In any case, um, just for quick reference, either in case you are lurking and didn't know or have forgotten entirely, um, we are working on flattening out some land because I would really really like to do some pixel art that looks kind of like that, so the stained glass window. We'll be skipping some of the sides to it, um, like a just straight up to the little gray line on either side, and then just do the center section, all the picture part. But yeah, need some relatively flat land for that. So that's what we're, that's what we're working on. Trying to orient. Okay, there we go. That tree's outside the line, but I've made it look so ugly I probably should take it down and then get back across the line so that I don't forget where I am. It's all right to have north, east, west, and south, but if I can't remember which side of the line I'm on, then it doesn't. Um, 
to. I'm going to eventually need to deforest a lot more um, after we get everything flat and get the picture built because I'm going to be putting like, a picture frame around the outside just to one block terrace, um, multi-layered block terrace. But I uh, figured that, you know, let's leave that part till after we do the art because things could come up, things could change. You never really know what's going on in it. Hopefully you guys had great weekends. If anything exciting happened in your weekend, please do let us know. Um, weekend excitement wise, there wasn't a, there wasn't a whole ton for us. Um, my daughter's soccer game got rained out on Saturday due to thunder, so that was kind of too bad because they were on the field for less than five minutes when we just when one of the parents and the coach saw lightning in with everybody else hearing the thunder, and they said, "Yep, game's canceled. Thanks a million. See you." on practice on Tuesday, which was great, but on the other hand, it would be one, you'd make the effort to crawl to the field, and two, my daughter was actually for a change kind of fired up about the game, and I say it's a change because sometimes she's nervous. Um, also, her team does not have a great record. I don't know quite why that is. Sometimes the kids are on point, sometimes they're poorly and distracted and don't really feel into it. Um, that could have played into it, but right here, yeah, that could have played into it, but, uh, that was weird. I'm not going to ask. I did that. But on Sunday, my son's team did fairly well, actually. Um, they don't have a great record either. Um, particularly if I consider the two seasons together, because an awful lot of the players were on both teams last seasons and this seasons. But he actually had a good a good game where his his team kept kept the ball down in the other end and actually managed a two nothing win, which was pretty impressive. Um, people were very much on form, so I was really pleased to see that. It was good because we um, we did the soccer parent thing the week before, and I mean that in the in the most unkind way, um, where unfortunately my son had reason to um, have us have a word with him just on his own personal efforts. And he really stepped it up and was a big difference this week than he was the week before. So, yeah. Between that and the win, I was quite proud. He actually, um, his coach had tagged him this week for a lot of throw-ins from the side. And uh, that was great because um, on one of our two, two goals, the first one actually, he uh, managed to help set that up for the team by, by a couple of very, very good throw-ins. And so I was quite pleased with him um, because he decides quickly who's going to throw it into and made a good good thought on where to throw it. Some coaches are really fussy about making sure you throw it where your team is or like where like to, I guess not is, but to one of your players. But uh, my son was making a relatively good judgment in terms of where it was open and he felt that our one of our players was successfully able to get to and it turned out he was right, so it worked out. So one in, one out, you know, one good one, one not so great, but it wasn't based on effort this time, it was just weather. Besides, I mean, as much as I would be crying the rain, you don't have to water the lawn. It's fantastic. The weeds love it. <laughs> so yeah, it's good. And I am one of those people who is horrible at getting things my garden started. And this year I have not done anything yet. Um, officially spring came late, but there's still quite a lot of like seedlings and stuff in the, the garden center, so I really should start that. Um, I will admit I'm enjoying gaming and that's not to gardening but on the other hand um short term immediate yeah well short term need is actually that our kids scout group is having a bottle drive this weekend and we don't go door knocking we actually just go and pick up what people have left out in front of their doors for us so in order to get that to happen of course we need to deliver the flyers and that needs to be done by thursday which um Nobody in the house was interested in doing it last week, and now that we've got the rain, well, we just have to go do it in the rain, because it's going to be raining the majority of the week, and winds are picking up. Which is not great, only in that I don't like wind. On the other hand, I can hide in a wind-resistant or wind-breaking earband um, underneath my rain hat, so nobody will see it. Yeah. 
don't like being out in crummy weather, but I mean, if you think about it, it's one of those situations where you can make your own bed, you gotta lie in it. That's okay, it is what it is. Again, this strip, I'm just gonna go back for it. And that corner appears cleared out. Freeze. Um, I admit I have not updated the question of the day. So, yeah, there is that. And as far as I know, I think Kreef is the only one that's realized question of the day is currently a public command, meaning that everybody can run it. So if I can actually remember to get it updated, that'll be handy. I had a question of the day website and then promptly left my hub at close, so remember I'll stop my bean when that was either. Probably something fairly benign. But the intent is to get the question of the day rolling. Um, off and on sort of putting half effort into shopping around for either a good website of suggestions or um, a good book of suggestions. But yeah, I haven't found it yet. Um, one of the things that I have not been able to explain about this particular area, and I still don't get it, is why base itself isn't too bad with regards to a uh, number of um, NPC villagers. Not NPC villagers, sorry, um, NPC visitors. But for some reason, this zone seems to be higher than rivermates seem to figure as average for uh, villagers such as pillagers. And I don't know why, because I was working on this on the weekend while we were watching the movie, and no less than four raiding parties during the course of watching Back to the Future 1. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. On the whole. Fine. Now. Okay, we can see we've got a ways to go. We're standing at 78, but it, I did chop it down to 70 down there. It's not too bad. We've got a ways, but at least we can start to see progress. Then it's a little easier and doesn't feel like it's going to be forever. I can get off the mining zone, get back the other direction, and pick up for the next strip. As you can see, like mining around this level, we would have been in the way. So I've got a lot of, I mean, I've got a lot of various different types of woods. Like I picked up a ton of both, well, there's some spruce, but um, an awful lot of dark oak, of course, from taking down a mansion. So I've got that that type sorted. Um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of oak and birch from this project. Um, living in a savanna, I have a patient, I shouldn't say to my heart's content, but it's relatively easy to get. So it's not a big deal there. Just low on a few more of the exotic, as I'm as I'm choosing to refer to them, travel woods. Um, have not picked up the new um, oh, what's it? mangrove wood. Yes, thank you. mangrove wood yet. Um, because I mentioned last week, because we're not doing a, a trim, and I totally understand why. On this Java server, there's no real point to do trim. It's not like we're stuck size-wise for space. In the way that sometimes the uh, bedrock seeds can bloat pretty badly in their maps. Don't trim them. Um, because we don't have that issue, then there's no point in doing the trim, and so anger woods and whatever are going to be quite a ways out. However, uh, because I'm doing when I'm doing these projects, spending an awful lot of time on the server by myself, then I'm, of course I'm getting a higher than average incidence of wandering trader, and so I'm just hello. He happens to have. Good morning, Zerk soon-ish. Oh, you mean on the server? Yes. <laughs> as long as you don't do it in the middle of one of my streams, I'm okay with that. You know? Although I would probably have to pay a little more attention to Discord just to make sure that I catch when that has been done so that I make sure that I get my client updated, because that's one of those nasty surprises on stream when, in essence, we've known about it for weeks kind of thing. And uh, and then get going to get the surprise on stream is a little embarrassing. Not horribly so. It's it's one of the type of embarrassments I can survive. So fine.
strangely enough, I actually had that happen uh, to somebody I was watching. Is they were playing, I can't remember which server it was, some smaller one, um, like as in a streamer's server. And uh, they were just playing along, streaming along, and then the server went down. Just, it seemed random, but I guess what happened, this person had been away on vacation and supposedly had not done their due diligence in, in checking the homework. And uh, got back, started streaming, and the server went down because they had set it to update during one of the normal regular scheduled reboots. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll be back in a couple minutes, blah, blah, blah. And then turned out they had to go in the, and do the tail between the legs kind of thing. Going, oh, I forgot to check, and I didn't look at homework. No, I didn't actually check first. And they updated, and my client is not updated and is refusing to be cooperative in that way. And it's like, oh, well, great. But I do appreciate the heads up, Zerk, actually. That's going to be very, very helpful because um, that tells me in advance that I should probably, since I'm using multi-MC, my launcher, I should probably go ahead and build a 119 setup and be hunting for any of the quality of life mods that I hope to have updated, etc. Um, to be able to get that all going so I can just fire it up when necessary. That's totally cool. Of late, my backup plan, if... I did get caught out and something was non-cooperative for me. Probably just to be jumping to whatever Wednesday's Valheim. Because it's quick, it's easy, like it launches fairly fast in my system. Off we go. But I think that would help a lot too because some of the folks that are jumping into um, to Java playing brand new because of the ability last week to, to Play whichever version you want as long as you own one of them. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a bunch of them, of course, are getting the launcher fully installed and finding out, oh, goodness gracious, I am a 119 and the server isn't yet and I don't yet know how to choose a different version and whatever. So, I mean, it would just be a little bit more uh, plug and play or wash and wear, I guess. I don't know. But something along those those sort of silly lines. I keep hitting the wrong button because in Valheim, opening your your inventory is a tab, whereas in Java, it just shows you who else is on the server with you. Some of the some of the buttons I will be shifting around, but some of them I've been in Minecraft been playing the same uh, key commands. Ring. I've been playing the same key commands for so long that it's just second nature for this one. But if I do start doing weird things, the major difference between these two apps, apps, two games, is that um, in Valheim, shift is run and control is crouch by default. I briefly tried switching it around and then discovered that with the amount that I want to run in that game, having the larger shift key under my pinky as the run was actually far more useful. So I'm hoping I can keep that mental visual image separate such a way that when I recognize that I have to see my character at all times and of course the world looks different, etc. I play the correct key, but the, this whole inventory business is really throwing me. I keep hitting the inventory key command for Minecraft while playing Valheim and vice versa. Probably something I could change in, in Minecraft, but I just haven't bothered looking into that one. But having... Um, having the server updated I think will be great because there, there's things people want to do. People want the new materials. People want that sort of thing. As I said, I won't be hunting for the new materials right away. Um, I generally assume my server mates are going to want to. New materials, new places. Here's, so they don't have to be doing that just on solo worlds, so or they can do it in a group adventure if they want to. Um, but yeah. Like, I'm sure that's something they're going to want fairly soon. Because it's not exciting once the hype of everybody else doing it has worn off. Back the other way. A little bit of to and fro, and a bit scatterbrained all over the place, but that's the way to fro, so great. Now, if you're seeing me chop them down, or chop them down and then smash up some of the leaves. Part of it is 
I don't like a whole bunch of leaf blobs hanging in my face. Part of it is oaks you can't, well, and other leaf types too, you can't trust that they're going to start despawning if they're connected together. So sometimes I do a bit of a smashy smashy afterwards to make sure that I've got all the, the pieces of the tree wood inside. They won't despawn until that's the case. And if they're connected together with neighboring trees that still have a stem, stem, sorry, a trunk, then you're not going to get them spawning. Which, my kind of luck, that's the sort of place that harbors creepers and skeletons and other nasties. So the more I can get rid of the foliage, the better. I'm trying a new playlist this morning from, um, who is it here? Would be Odd Chap. And I've looked into Odd Chap's music, and they actually, um, they claim to be totally copyright-free, that it's safe to stream it, etc. So I'm going with that. But I just, I've been hearing a few people playing the Electro Sling playlist via Pretzel Rocks, and I'm kind of missing it because I actually quite like Electro Sling at home. So I figured I would give it a shot and see what happens. There's a lovely service called um, Stream Tunes, S T R E E M T U N E S, uh, that I heard about on another, uh, like a YouTube creator's um, website in terms of like how you. One of those creators that that create videos to make streamers more, I don't know, professional, ready, complete, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, uh, they, they say better streamers. In my case, that's really debatable. But the point, what I'm trying to make here is I'd heard about this one and the reason I like it is I'm Canadian and so using the stream tunes uh, service is supposed to help support Canadian artists in terms of um, getting them exposed and helping them get good contracts and stuff like that but it's also a bit of a charity uh, service that they support that's Canadian songwriters or something or other and um, so I thought okay well I'm Canadian let's go with one that helps locals because a lot of the times when when we see charity streamers on Twitch, whatever their charity happens to be, of course they're American. Now, no offense to American people, yes, you need help too. But um, I always prefer to try and help someone more or less at home, or I get too deep into helping those in other in other countries. Um, it's a sort of a strange, not a people in glass houses concept, but more of a. Um, to an old phrase my grandmother was incredibly fond of, but it's the uh, don't worry about this die in someone else's eye unless you remove the log from your own. So that sort of plays into the idea of trying to help charities that are more focused on your country before you spend too much on others. But anyways, that's where I was going with, with it was to use a stream tune service. The problem with them, unfortunately, while it's uh, copyright free, the yada yada yada, every one of the tunes on there appears to be one that YouTube loves to give you uh, temporary copyright notices on. Um, unless you, like, if you go into the Streamtunes website, add your YouTube uh, address to it. Say yes, we know we're using your music. And that's all you have to do. You don't even, strange enough, you don't even have to say who this music is, which I thought was weird. You, I thought they'd require attribution, but they don't. In any case, once you've got your address registered with them, they will actually ensure that uh, that YouTube releases the notices. Fine, no problem. But it's, it's taken me four rounds of adding my address before it finally got to the point where I don't get the copyright notices from YouTube anymore. That sounds like a good thing. I get emails for every one of the releases. So even though I don't get the notice, for having been struck in the first place. Look at four or five notices per stream. YouTube saying, yep, your copyright notice has been released. And it's like, thanks. So I like that service, but I'm going to be using it less and less just because it's a pain in the neck. So that's part of it is sometimes I'll find a good, good service and I like what they do, but then something goes sideways and it's not ideal. One of the uh, risks with a face cam is if there's a really good tune, you accidentally might catch me grooving until I realize what's going on, and then I'm like, uh, uh, no, 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 don't want to get caught. Embarrassing. And then sometimes I just don't care. 
Today's one of those I'm not sure if I care or not moments. I have a suspicion I'm gonna go have to go through a lot of these places and just smash up leaves. Looks like... Well, maybe they will. It looks like they take forever in a day if the trees are touching the ground in any sort of fashion. Pardon me. Ow. Cow. Excellent. There, why not? Is them in here somewhere? Yes. Ooh. That's off a ledge. It's awfully quiet today, and that's actually kind of nice. I can't hear the rain in the room where I am actually playing. Probably for the better, but it is a little odd. When it's soothing in other parts of the house since we have no thunder. But in here, it's, I'm not playing tunes. All I've got to keep me company is the summer fan, and that's a very constant drone sound. So it's not, it's not as chilling, relaxing. It's chilling in a different sense because I'm usually cold. I was thinking the other day about the, um, the constant argument that people talk about with regards to buzzes wanting different temperatures in the house. Sometimes we do that, but I've just decided I'm not, I don't want to be one of those people. So rather than complaining about the temperature, I just put on a sweater. And my husband sometimes laughs. That just gives me just a strange look because um, the temperature will actually say in the house, Celsius, we've got like what, 24, and I'm not quite sure what that conversion is in American, but we're over easily over 72, somewhere between 72 and 75, I think. Might even be closer to 75. Anyways, point is, um, so I'll just be wandering around the house in a sweatshirt or a sweater or something, and he's like, "What the?" And I'm sort of wondering the same why myself, um, and it just turns out really that I am um, sensitive to air movement. So a place could be hot, but if there's a slight breeze, I'm not going to feel hot. So when we have fans on in the house, I need to move the air as an attempt to cool it down because it's just too hot around here. Um, sometimes I will be wearing a sweater because the air movement makes me feel cold. It's really odd. And yet, um, for that reason, I don't like having fans blowing straight on me. In the heat of the summer when it really is hot, I won't always be wearing a sweater. But um, I will be like sitting in a part of the house where people are like, it's just so hot. Can't we turn on a fan? And then it just happens to be that you can't reach a fan there, so there's no movement. I'm you know, happy. Yes, it's hot, but I'm not actually having a fan on me, so it's all good. Again, I swear running for a bed with the wrong inventory key is not going to get. <laughs> Zerk says, I thought Canadians all lived in igloos. If we li if we lived in an igloo this far south, I can, I can guarantee that summer would be chaotic. Okay, where? I know my cat followed me now, because I've had rabbit hide, I've had string, and I now I've had chicken, and I can hear the cat, but I cannot see them. Which could mean there's a cave below that I've somehow jammed in and the poor cat's inside it. Um... Oh, creeper. That might explain why the creeper left me alone. So I'm debating whether or not to uh, find Kitty and take him home, or just trust that he'll be around somewhere. Most of my cats around here are pretty dumb. I have one left, um, so I don't even have a breeding pair anymore, because they do stupid things, like teleport to me and decide to sit on top of the lava-filled cauldron. Of course, Kitty did not survive that. Yeah, bright, bright one there, feline. So if we all lived in Igloo Zerk, there would be a lot of really sad people because this far south, we do um, get enough heat, there's no way an Igloo would hold up. On the other hand, 
it's either that or they'd be dead from suffocation, um, because one of the other things Igloo stands for in Canada, and I believe some parts of the U.S. as well, they're a company of um, food cooler makers. Like when you go camping and need a beer chest or something, um, or an ice chest or whatever, then yeah, they make those. And so we'd have some pretty, pretty old people, old, dead, whatever, people. Which is morbid, and it's not meant to be morbid on this stream. Um, but yeah, that's the other thing igloo means up here. Now, on, now on the other hand, but yeah. yeah, igloo coolers, exactly. Exactly. Up here, the uh, most one of the more common brands you see is something called Coleman. Um, I'm not a huge fan of them, but well, one of those ones that in my world I grew up with. So. To have a Coleman cooler means things will stay cold for a while if you get it closed properly, but they are notorious for not closing smoothly. Oh, okay, that's a proper cave that I did not light up. That's no good. It's proper enough that it needs help. Be here. If I have a ledge. Okay, I've got a ledge that more or less keeps ish. There, maybe? 65, yeah. 65 seems to be about the level that I don't have a problem filling in. So if we get some dirt later, we'll fill it in. Uh, mind me. Got another torch. One way, silly. Another torch, right up. 65, yeah. On that 65 line. And then that'll remind me to come in. Fill that in. I think. Remember to put one. As we as we mine down, I'm sure I'm gonna find it again. I just I don't want to fall into it. Okay. Okay. Eco coolers are, are really handy. Um, we're looking at getting a Yeti cooler. So I have a Yeti coffee cup and Yeti thermos bottle, and they are fantastic. And well, the internet say Yeti coolers are, well, no bad puns intended, the cat's meow. And uh, so we're thinking about getting one of those. We're looking at, at uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's upgrade or downgrade, um, but we're looking at replacing and or getting some more uh, car camping gear. And uh, Fantastic Shock Fox and I come from sort of two different backgrounds. His family, as far as I know, did not car camp, and his mother's family, um, of course, has plenty of memories of like the old proper style canvas tents and so on with either the the army or scouts or you know whatever you you name it. And uh, so they're like, no, 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 I'm not a camper, not a camper at all. But uh, things are a little different. I grew up camping and quite like it. Even the days where you where you just flop around the site and you don't do much of anything. I used to love it for like book reading. Fantastic. Read books at camping. It just felt good to sit sit around in the outdoors. Sometimes hear things like squirrels and stuff harassing you. Or you can go for a hike or have a picnic or go sightsee or whatever works. But the thing is you can only do so many day trips from your city where you actually need to go out somewhere. So I grew up camping. We had tents that never ever were able to be put up by one person. And as you can gather from my Coleman comments, we had coolers that, depending on how long you were staying, at least halfway through you'd have to find yourself um, a little city or town that you could buy more ice for the ice chest or a new ice block or whatever because your other ones had thawed, etc. And uh, so my memories of that were suboptimal. On the other hand, um, one of the things that I grew up with that I didn't want to have happen for my kids was that we did camping as a family for a while. Um, and then my husband, or not my husband, my, my dad, so my mom's husband, my dad decided that after a certain point, we were, the kids old enough, my brother and I were old enough that he didn't need to come camping anymore. He was done with that nonsense. He wasn't going to do it anymore. And we were old enough to be able to handle ourselves or at least be manageable by my mother. He stopped camping. Um, I'm thinking the odd trailer trip or whatever, 
because we had like a student exchange and we and we got ourselves a, a we borrowed an ant's RV and things like that. So I mean, we did do a little bit, but for the most part, if we were camping, it was my mom, my brother, and I, and that was it. Um, he's done some, but it's just it was always like pulling teeth, and it usually made for a fairly miserable experience. So when I uh, was growing up, I said, "Yeah, I'm going to take the kids camping." When I was growing up, having my own kids, yeah, I'm going to take the kids camping, but we needed to um, do the same thing for a long time. Was the kids and I, because Fantastic Sherlock Fox could not leave the office as frequently as we would like. Um, definitely was not a is not a spur of the moment camper. I can, but I recognize now that my kids cannot. It's going to be a while till they do that, if they ever can. I mean, spur of the moment could be, not tomorrow sort of deal, but as in, you know, Monday or the week before or whatever, like, you know, I think next weekend I'd like to go camping, so let's go book a spot. Not easy to do, but there are a good number of sites in our provincial parks that are first come, first serve. And uh, so that means in theory, if you wanted to meet a party or whatever, you could go out the night before and stake your site and uh, and then your party can come in the next day. So we've talked about that since we have two vehicles, potentially doing that sort of thing. Um, but we have also discovered that since I started doing that, the kids camping that way, um, there are opportunities for um, more cell coverage than there used to be, which means that limitedly, um, my husband can actually take Take some time and if we actually say we pulled a, a trailer out rather than a, a tent then if need be he could work during the during the week via cell phone data with his laptop and whatever and we can go and do some of the sightseeing stuff so we have that opportunity to be more family together and that's part of why we're looking at the longer trips being trailer trips and potentially doing some car camping weekends but that means then that unfortunately we need a tra uh, trailer sorry it's like tents that are big enough for all of us um, Fantastic Shock Fox is 6'4", which means that he gets a kink quite easily with most tents because they're just not designed for that. I, on the other hand, am not normally a fan of very tall tents, but that's because my previous experience of very tall tents was that they were not very um, weatherproof, which meant that I had bad memories of being wet and cold in tall tents, and I had just put the two and two together. So, we're, sh we're shopping around the... Um, they do exist, like nice, nice high tents do exist, and we don't have to be able to stand up in them entirely, but the taller the better. Um, the other thing is taller tents tend to work well for longer tents. Okay, so we have hit the halfway point in stream, which means that um, normally we will switch over to Lego for the moment, and we're just finishing up the Harry Potter uh, Fluffy's encounter, so I'm going to switch to the BRB screen and then see you over at the Lego desk. It's Lego time, yippee skippy. So, pardon me. I know we're drinking coffee and it keeps falling a lot of air with it today. So we got Fluffy, and uh, Fluffy's going to be guarding his space, of course. So we are working on the tower that's going with our, our Hogwarts encounter. I should show you the back side of this. It actually looks pretty cool in the back. We've got sort of the, the rock face thing. So it goes into the rock face for the castle. And we are just finishing up the roof part for this tower. This is set this aside. Now let's start with a base and a couple little circles. This part isn't going to take very long. Um, and they've got some accessories that they're putting with it. And they go inside it, so it's a little bit more unique. Lego time, so it's fantastic Sherlock Fox. 
Sometimes it makes me think that that sounds like one of your favorite bits. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have a, a table inside here, and they want us to put together... Oops. There we go. I shouldn't put it on yet. So I actually get all the bits and bobs on it, because it makes it harder to place. Okay, so we've got what looks like a little bottle. And that goes right on a, an edge. Oops, wrong one. And then we've got, oh, this is kind of cool. It looks kind of like, I'd say this piece has been used in other contexts as a candy jar, but it's a little labeled jar. It doesn't show too well on camera, I'm afraid, but uh, it's a little bit of a labeled jar with an orange lid. Oh, well, not, not orange. Tan. The picture looks orange in this, in the setup, but in the actual build, it's like a light brown. So yes, Zerk is free of, of the orange for now. We have a candle, so we've got oh, a gold base. Of course, no wonder why that wasn't working. Gold base. And of course, flames are orange. You can't help that. There we go. A candle on the table. Um, one, two, three, that one. There we are. We're in base. Bring! And of course, that goes on the base. You have to go straight. There we are. And then we've got side rails. Times two. One of the more satisfying large pieces. It just sits in and around the table. That's part of why we don't the table onto it early. Hello, Tis for Truth. So, talking of Lego, apparently there's supposed to be a big announcement by Moyang at LegoCon by Lady Agnes this weekend. I have to admit to being curious about what it will be. Ooh! Thank you for the heads up. Thank you very much for the heads up for that. And hello, Tis for Truth. I wonder if it may be a partial um, to. Moyang at the Lego Con. That's unusual. Going, if it's going the other way, I could totally see it. But maybe they could be partnering up um, with an. Oh, I forgot a sticker. And I can't put the sticker on afterwards. So I've got to pull this piece back off. Um, so I wonder if they're partnering up with talking about releasing sets for the newer updates of Minecraft. Because, um, I mean, I would love to see a Lego mangrove tree. That would be awesome. I'm sure that at some point there's going to be a Lego warden. That's. That's like uh, that's Lego for you. They tend to do that sort of thing. Okay, so we've got ourselves. Not quite sure what that is. They're weird little shapes. So I'm gonna guess they've got like a divination thing going on here. But I know some of the uh, the jars were related to another of the challenges, but that would have been farther on. If you read the books, there's. Um, a challenge involving potions where you have to get the right one to be able to go through a wall of flame, a wall of magical fire. And it's not quite straight, but it, I think it'll work. Looks good enough for me. Some people are really, really picky about getting it straight. I just want it straight ish. I mean, the stuff hung on this, the line in the sticker looks kind of haphazard. So I don't mind my putting it on being slightly haphazard, because I think that sort of fits the, the mood. If you take a look at the wall of um, stuff that Filch hangs in movie 5, then, or book 5, but in movie 5 it's all crooked. The decrees from Dolores Umbridge are all crooked all over the wall, and they are in the Lego set as well, so I think that that works well to put this, this thing up as well. Uh, slightly crooked just because Filch wouldn't have worried too much about it being straight. Okay, so I'm really glad that they gave me that heads up because I can put that on my calendar to make sure to look for it. Lego does send me weekly little emails, but the thing about these weekly emails is that um, I try to avoid them. Well, not avoid them. I don't spend too much time in them because otherwise I end up with like a wish list, a drool style wish list of something that like a shopping list, and I'm... The vast majority of my LEGO sets, Fantastic Show Fox has bought for me simply because I don't like spending money for that sort of thing on myself. I absolutely enjoy it, like, when I get them. 
but I really don't like spending money on it. Sounds weird. So yeah, I posted a couple of pictures in um, Dadcraft Discord. It was, it was in the middle of an off-topic conversation, um, but suffice to say, I have a good amount of Lego in my room where we're streaming from. And I will go back to the game. I just, it keeps feeling like we're, we are almost done, but I think I'm just going to do, actually, what we got here? You can, the, you can see me wiggling around a little bit of the book. Okay, yeah, I think I'm just going to put one piece of the tower on and then we'll call it because otherwise I'm going to get too far into one of these steps. Mental note to myself, I have to talk to Marimal Jade. Because she does lovely Lego on stream and I keep forgetting to check with her what her routine is. But I don't like doing it online and I don't yet know a way of doing it offline. So if anybody has a better way of contacting her, please do let me know in the comments or in the comments. This isn't a video. <laughs> Um, but tag me via DM in Discord or something and let me know the best way to do that because I really don't want to bother her during one of her streams. And I have not actually been able to be present when somebody has started a LEGO Step Redeem. I usually always end up showing up in the middle of it. Okay, so we are back to the Dadcraft ser server for some more tree chopping and I will just switch screens and be right back with you. While I'm just refreshing the server here, I wanted to note that I did see a little bit about PP Zerk and the the Warden, and I'm really quite curious to hear some of those stories. I'm sure the, that the Warden is a little on the scary side. Um, seen it through some of the, the st or bleh, 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 bleh. people's snapshots and stuff. And of course, okay, let's go live. So of course, I pop back in at 3 something in the morning. Murphy's Law. I kid you not, in the last dozen logins. Aha, kitty! Oops. I kid you not, in the last dozen logins I've had, um, it's been night every single stinking time. Hello, kitty. Get off my bed now. Now we know where the cat is. Current. North is this way. East is that way. And I'm in and amongst the tree. Home that way. Okay, now I know where I'm at. Eek! I did not mean to do that. Oh, lovely. There we go. See? Cat. <laughs> Alright. That's inside the line, outside the line. Excuse me, itch. Go. Hello. Good morning, Creef. Good evening, Del. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> good evening, Creef, as you say good evening to Del. Yes. From the other side of the world, it is Kreef the Amazing. Tree chopping. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. It's actually kind of funny, but one of the things I miss from um, playing games like Valheim when I come back into Minecraft is some of the silly quality of, quality of life comments. Um, you don't get quite full of, of crazy stuff, but I mean, like, for example, um, Valheim, of course, tells you all about what's going on in your dream as you sleep. It just, it's just a big text thing that pops on your screen, and, and I swear it's on a random number roll. But in any case, um, there's other little things that you feel cold. You, know? you are warming up. But it, my mental equivalent of that in Minecraft, when I'm chopping trees like this, would be... You grab the log with your hand, and you've got yourself a sliver. 
and you just like regeneration recovery slows down briefly. Something silly like that. I just missed some of those quality of life items because it'd be kinda nice to have craziness. So PP Zerk was saying Oh sorry. Uh Zerk was telling us Echo, echo, echo. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, now I get it. Um, the microphone at my main desk, when I'm sitting in front of it, that one overrides and goes through all scenes. The Lego one only goes through the Lego scene. So if I was making a mistake and sitting on the Lego table scene still, then way across the room, the Lego camera can pick up via its mic um, that I'm talking. So if I ever get echo like that, it's pretty likely I'm probably still sitting on the Lego screen. It took me a minute to figure out what you were talking about, and now I'm like, oh, right. Universal cameras can be a blessing or a curse. Um, yeah, so Dirk was telling us about, about some of the... or that that PP Zerk has stories to tell regarding the Warden, and I'm not surprised. Every, just about everybody I've watched go through the new Warden situation, they are really quite nervous about it. Um, although I am a little bit surprised just how many um, players, when they're streaming it, are choosing to stream from a hardcore world and going Warden hunting. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm just not that kind of player, I guess, but it doesn't make sense to me because at this point of the game, the warden for a lot of players is pretty much it's it's a just about guaranteed like total face roll death. So I don't understand why players are doing it in a hardcore world, but each their own. Um, that said, though, I'm starting to hear a little bit of talk. Like as in, I'm not going hunting for it. So, probably out there on the internet, but I'm starting to hear streamers discuss um, that there's various different ways of cheesing the Warden. There's always going to be ways of cheesing something. But now that these are coming out, on the and some are saying um, what was it? dealing with the Warden is easier than dealing with, with a uh, Wither. I would disagree, but that's not because... It's not because the withers are easy. They're not. I mean, I refuse to face a wither alone. Even well prepared and even knowing, in theory, knowing what I'm doing, the practicality, I just, no. But that's not just a fear factor. Um, the warden, I don't do well in the dark. And I just, what I mean by that is I don't do well with things that jump scare me. And the warden is designed to do that. Um, I also don't do well with, um, Things where you can be a fully enchanted, fully um, fully netherrated sword, and it still feels like forever in a day to be able to get the warden down. Whereas um, the warden can basically one or at best two shot you. you no, know, I'm kind of going. Eh. I'll pass, thanks. Yeah, the ancient cities are something that it's very clear that Mojang has put some very solid effort into. Um, really the the Warden and the Ancient Cities combination, I think, between getting lost and the risk of having the Warden pop up anywhere and, and everywhere sort of thing, um, not just the Shriekers and stuff, but I mean the distances they've got going on, is it's the new end, like in terms of, I think, the type of end-end people we're looking for. But the area now called the end is just a fun another place fun pardon me um another place to be fun is a, is a relative definition um but i'm saying like by comparison the end is feeling very tame and i think eventually they're going to need to do something about that um they keep saying they're going to redo the end but also the other thing about it you um, we're going to have to do something about the end, because noob noob players, if you don't have any clue what you're up to, so to speak, then you get, you get to end game or you feel that you're ready to take on the dragon and go to the end and portals and all that jazz. Get there. 
and uh, you get the usual end story and so on, like the the credits and whatever. Um, and I think they're done. I think that's it. And it's not that this is a procedural game; you, you can certainly play it that way. But if you all you do is get to the end in that sense, you're missing out. Good people figure. I defeated the dragon. I got back, and that's all there is to it. And it's like, uh, no. But it's not always clear, so... Truly, the end doesn't exist in this game, and Moyang's acknowledged that. But it's kind of funny because you can have a far rougher experience that does not even have to involve the end. So that by the time you actually... If you become more comfortable with ancient cities, etc., I mean, only you have to be on your guard, and it's not something I'm going to be doing, um, I'm sure there will be people that will eventually be able to just make the end cities, or sorry, the ancient cities feel procedural. Then you just do this, and then you do that, and then you whatever. And then if they were to do that before the dragon, and the and the actual part labeled the end, then it wouldn't be a walk in the park by comparison. But some of these... I've seen people do things in creative to go find the warden, and they still end up being surprised by it and sort of went, oh my goodness, good thing I'm in creative because otherwise this thing would have taken me apart. So I find it rather odd. Moyang, Moyang is doing the same thing they've always done to some extent. So some parts are never new. Um, but what I find odd is that it's becoming predictable that you get a new boss or tougher monster or whatever, and then they give you new armor. I've ventured into 1.19 on a test world, um, the creative flight and all that jazz. Um, briefly, I've discovered a few deep darks, but I have not yet discovered an end city. Or not, sorry, I keep mixing up the two. Um, an ancient city. However, um, I also have not tried it in Bedrock. I've looked in Java. And uh, so I did not use the locate command kind of thing. So there's, there's, if you take a look at, at Stormy Owl's uh, VOD, there is, um, she and Mr. Cheese were using the locate commands. So you could locate ancient city. I thought it was kind of cool. I didn't think that they would actually put that in there, but I suppose they wanted to make it easy access for people who um, wanted to get there from, easy from square one, but in, in creative, they wanted to make it so people could actually do that. I wasn't sure if that was something that they were going to try and lock down to um, a must be in creative, make that command work, but apparently not. Yeah. There's that. They're definitely beautiful, and there's many interesting details, um, but it's deep and dark for a reason. And I don't mean that don't, but I mean as in, it's one of those things where if... I've seen a couple of people go in and try and do it in survival with no night vision potions. And in all honesty, they're saying, I can't see anything! And that's before you even get to um, dealing with wardens and stuff. But I mean, like, putting in torches is not... Not getting getting you much of anywhere. I will say though, um, I'm actually surprised, not surprised, amused. I guess is probably a better way of putting it. That I haven't yet heard a lot of people uh, having the, the gender comments. But do you see it as blue or do you see it as green? What color are the end city blocks? Blue or green? In terms of their base, because it's one of those aqua turquoise kinds of things, where where they'll probably have a gender split in terms of who sees it how. I wouldn't even mind if they if they um, kept the end. Um, I mean, it needs a, it needs an overhaul for sure, but I wouldn't even mind if they um, like to rename it something bland, like the end desert, because really that's all it is. There's like nothing there, unless you want. I mean, the end stone, the end cities are cool enough, but they're not. A, it's not a city, which so I, that was a bit of a misnomer to begin with. Um, but B, in terms of, like, if you want blocks and resources, there's really not that much there. Yeah, putting down torches summons more darkness. Now, the thing I haven't heard, to the truth, is that if you put down overworld torches, 
or does it still do the same thing if you use soul fire torches? I'm kind of curious as to whether or not there'd be a difference there. Um, visitors. Hey. Is where I was going, um, not to get back on a, a rant train or anything, but I'm, if you don't have the right, yeah, he's not bothering me, I won't bother him. Uh, if you don't have the right, uh, gear for one boss, they add a boss, and then you get, so then Moyen goes in and puts in material for you to do that. You know, there, but when I joined, diamond was the thing, like that's all there was. Um, and of course they made things tougher and eventually Diamond wouldn't cut it. So, next thing you know, there's Netherite. Oh, or Diamond was hard to find. Well, everybody and their dogs started being able to share tips and tricks on the best way to max out the random generation of Diamond. Okay. Hence that being a currency in a lot of worlds. It still is, at the moment, the de facto currency, but I'm quite surprised that people haven't said, no, we're going to make it, we're going to make it cinnamon buns. You know, it's got to be netherite ore or something. Or, if they're a real pain in the butt, a block of... Oh, really? A block of netherite. But on the other hand, I don't want it to be that expensive because I don't really want to go mining for the stuff. Come on. If you're going to get in the game, play in the game. Alrighty. Fine. Do you have anything useful? No. Nothing but experience. Come on. That's pretty far. Huh. Hello, kitty. Um Yeah. I've been I've been to the end. Not the end, the Oh boy, I didn't expect Kitty to show up. Leave that banner there then. See? I have chicken like crazy, so I don't Right, kitty, you can eat that. Should have given it to you. Um, I'm distractible today. Yeah, but I, so I've only been to the ancient cities and stuff in creative. They're quite the maze. Yes. Um, the reason I did it in Java snapshots, or not snapshots. Sorry, the reason I did it in Java was because the I I. I found that the, the spectator mode in um, Bedrock is a little bit quirky, so I don't usually use it when I'm in creative. Um, that's good enough for me. But the spectator mode, of course, lets you fly right through things. So there's the one searching for for the ancient cities in deep dark and stuff. That was actually quite useful. Find a likely locale and then. Which modes and just go right through the wall. It di well, diamonds are more accessible by the average player, and the below average player, such as myself, um, does not like caving, but yeah, diamonds are definitely more accessible for sure. Well, that, I mean, I totally agree with you that I hope no one switches it. But on the other hand, um, I'm see- Oh, I just realized the problem with not having an in uh, chest that I can't get to shulkers that I brought to get rid of my inventory. Oh. Villagers make diamonds pretty useless except as currency. Yeah. Start to bed bombing. <laughs> um my aunt. I'll talk today. Oh. He's here. Ooh for now. Actually, random junk bin. Go with a gray random junk bin for now. I 
random junk will be here. There. Oh, and I think I've got it there. Uh, put one over here. That'll do. Um. Oops, not birch. Villagers make diamonds produce except currency. You're you're right in that sense, but currency is supposed to be difficult to get hold of, as I understand it. That was part of why diamonds were chosen as the currency. Um, back in the day, I should say. And now it's more of a habit thing. Sapling, come on you. Oh. You. Those. Random junk can go here. I'm gonna put sticks in here because I can just trade them away differently. Go. Not as cleaned up as I can get. Back. Oh, wait. Need the bed. Go. Yeah, that's a good enough spot for things to work. Um. I guess diamonds are the shinies, right? Like, you can trade diamonds to villagers, which is all well and good, I suppose. But as a currency, truthfully, I'd rather have the trade the other direction. But if, it, if that was the case, then you get stuff to trade to the villagers, you get emeralds, then you trade emeralds for diamonds. So, I mean, it, it really devalues the diamonds if it's that easy to get. I have no idea why on earth they ever included the emerald to diamond, or the diamond to emerald trade. One has to be incredibly desperate to waste your, your stuff doing that trade. I don't know why anybody would. Like, why waste the diamonds that are harder to get? To get emeralds, which you can get by, like, farming wheat. You know, the easiest thing to do in the entire bloody game. Or even, even easier, you know, chop something down, turn it into a gazillion sticks. And so, I don't know why you would ever use that one. It, there are some, I mean, I guess, in a way, um, there are some trades where I, on one hand, think, Moyang, you're crazy, why on earth did you include that trade? It makes absolutely no logical sense. And then on the other hand, um, I look at it and I go, well, you know, there is something to be said for the idea that Moyang may have actually put it in A, as a lurk, but B, more as a tourist trap. And as a tourist trap, people will be dumb enough to actually use it. And then they go, oh, I made a big mistake. Well, tough luck. You know, you have to learn that that's a stupid trade. In the same sort of way that um, Suspicious too can be awesome. If you bother to take the time to do food test and work out which stews are safe and which stews are dangerous. Because... You know, then you could trade for them as an actual food source, if you know which ones do what. Or you can make them yourself, you know? But a lot of players are like, why bother? That's just dumb. Well, you know, play styles. I'm, I'm trying to get rid of this tree before I go sleep, but I may not... Yep, nope, gotta go sleep. In the top of a tree pole. Yes, kitty, I know you want to nap on me. I get it. Now I'm missing chat here somehow. Uh, hmm. Feathers. Really? Really? Come on, cat. Okay, uh, that tree. See how much comes down. What's up with that tree? Okay. Oh, we shouldn't grab a hoe. That would be sensible. We'll go get a hoe. That would be even more sensible.
pie enough. Dick. Oh, this is painful. Yeah. Not doing that. One thing about one thing to be bullheaded and use crummy tools. It's another thing to not even bring said crummy tool to you. Good project. I'm conversationally all over the place today, so I do apologize. Here's yet. We left off with the diamonds as currency thing. I mean, now, to borrow a poor phrase, I'm one to talk because um, at the moment, I don't own a single diamond and I'm good with that. To be honest, this is my most currency free season I've had yet. And that's just due to lack of effort. Feathers. I don't even know what feathers. I don't think I have a feather spot. What's outside? A aim for these. That. F box. F nugget things. Oh, shears. Okay, that. Oh, well. These two in here. Lock up there. So there's nothing for ho. I really should go get more um, axes, but I'm not going to bother, I don't know. Good. Yeah, let's get rid of the sticks. Might as well just put things away when I happen to be here. No sense. Two feathers. All right. Oh, kitty. Where did you go? You are, yeah, okay. Come here, bud. Maybe. Come on, cat. That's close enough. You can stay there. More? Ring is nice, but not worry about that. Oh, well, we're making some progress. You start to see where we've got most of the trees deforested there. There's just this left hand chunk, and then we can chop to our heart's content. Uh oh, what did grief do? Either Zerk's been asleep. Or he just discovered Kreef is here. <laughs> Don't think Kreef is a troublemaker. That would be unusual. A good example of, of uh, how Delenn was staying up way too late over the weekend is Delenn got to say hello to Kreef on two different nights. Yeah. Silly, silly. I should get that late. It is half hour, well, 25 minutes before noon for me. So if I'm um, saying hello, or if you're saying good evening, we are definitely. If he's just logging on and I'm still there and it's his morning, yeah, I, I shouldn't be there. <laughs> Dead. Nothing. Okay. Oh, did I? I'm actually on the map. Yeah, good. I'm on the map. I thought I crossed into my square, but I couldn't recall. Alrighty. I'm really looking forward to getting this done because I really want to um, put up the actual art. It's the 14th? Yeah. Make it happen. 
think. So goal, um, and part of the reason I'm pushing through with this project rather than doing some projects one day and some projects another, aside from being really interested in getting to get the art put up, um, is I'm making it a goal to, if I can't get the art put up before then, or started, started before then, um, then I'm looking forward to doing some of that as a stream weekend stream. Um, not for lacking in other ideas, but it's either that or, or a bicycle from scratch, and I haven't got the bike part worked out. So, yeah. I shouldn't say bicycle from scratch, probably it would be another schematic, because that's such a weird one. But I don't really want to be making mistakes and tearing things down in big ways. But in order to do that, I, one way or the other, I still have to have it built in some world. E. Aha, much better. It was worth going back for the hoe. Up here. Oh, I don't see any. I love the big oak trees, except when I want to cut them down. Sounds funny, but um, they're just in the way when I'm just trying to deforest stuff. In those cases, I'd rather have just a plastic tree straight up. I don't care if it goes taller than five or six blocks, but the whole branching business is clean. The funny part is I can never tell why it does it. Like, I mean, it's probably a random number thing, but it's so uncommon. Really? Next. Cool. Oh! I'm gonna bet you that's six blocks down, or I would have filled it. Five. Nope, it's only five blocks, but I should have filled it. Or not five, um... I could have put a torch or something down and tell myself that's the bottom. That's not worth going to right now. Okay, so are we... We're getting closer, slowly. Slowly. This is the sort of place where... I get the impression that things have gone slower because they're touching the ground. That now, while that may not be true, it's definitely impeding travel. So, I wanted to put a torch in the bottom. I guess I will do so. <laughs> ah, okay, let's take. I want it down to seventy. So, oh, now I know why I didn't do that. Put that one back. Ah, that was as far as I could reach. All right. Torch in the bottom. Do not that. And I suppose. I guess I got a wood pole in here. Why not? I'll take it down as we get there. There. Fall in that hole. Right. In game, nonetheless. Yeah, exactly. Making some progress. So yeah, and then the next question I have for myself though is, what to build after, I know it sounds weird, I'm thinking two or three projects down the road, but what to build after I get um, through the stained glass art and then potentially the bicycle. I talk about it a lot, but I mean I talk about a great big armchair and that didn't happen, so I have to decide what it is I'm serious about working out to actually figure out what to build next. My brain straying to Maltese Falcon. But I'm not sure because I didn't. I enjoyed the movie, but I wasn't sure if I would enjoy it as much as a book. And it's been many, many years since I read the book. So I don't know if I want to do that one or not. We'll see. My brain's kind of all over by other projects in between. So yeah. It just makes me wonder what do I do next? What do I do next? And I guess I should probably not worry about it till I get to next. Whatever next happens to be. E. That's got a bit. Do oops. I swear, a uh, carnage joke could probably do this much faster. But she probably has a system. 
I thought her knack. And I thought neither. Sorry. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be minorly singing along. Although, the fact that I recognize this song and be able to sing along is a little concerning on the copyright front. I mean, I'm hoping that there's a, a cover for it. I thought I might get my first muting. Well, not muting. Um, not first one. I mean, I've been muted before. Find out whether or not this one got me into some trouble. Hoping it's a cover. In case the cover can be copyright free. Yeah. Trouble if it's not. Once again, distracted by losing direction, but I'm not sure I care. <laughs> I'm discovering trees are not something you can do in a systematic back and forth motion. At least not me. Oh. Didn't have super jump. This would be very, very annoying. Get off. Making some progress. But Creep, I did have one pillager party today. I don't know if you were online to see that. And, uh, not too surprised, but I had quite a lot of them on the weekend. So, after we watched Back to the Future, I was still hanging out online. Eventually, Creep came online. And so I said hello to him and whatever. And yeah, that was one of the days I saw the sun. Oh, that's water filled. Okay. Ew! How about that? Okay. Not good. Not good at all. We'll get down there eventually. I'll throw one in. Spraining a toe. Oh, yeah. So the question of today was, um, it's still an old one, but it's one of the dumbest things you've done recently that resulted in some sort of minor injury. I haven't done anything today. Um, I'm, yesterday I stubbed my toe on the foot of the bed, where, and they've got little locks on the on the bed frame wheels. I stubbed my toe on that and scraped it. A fantastic show fox says he'll throw one in, spraining a toe, finally. Proving to my daughter, Sheep Queen, you still know how to drop kick a soccer ball at a, a full field length. Oh, was that on the weekend when you almost got it to the train station? Or not train station, sorry, to the, to the light rail tracks? <laughs> I was kind of thinking that was probably not smart. But on the other hand, if he'd stood on the opposite side and did manage to successfully get that kind of distance, then um, it would have been in the public street. On the other hand, public street would be at least retrievable. Train tracks, not so much. It balances against all the times you miss a goal. Yeah, pillagers love hanging out at my place. I don't know what it is. I sometimes jokingly wonder to myself if um, having pillagers hanging out at my base may be the, part of the reason that my raid farm was so crummy. It also could be part of the reason why I sucked so absolutely terribly at the nearby actual raid. But no, I, I can't use an external excuse for that, that last one. I just not a great player and was not geared up for, for face rolling. Well. I was geared up to face roll. I was not geared up to successfully pull off getting rid of a raid. Did I go break, huh? No, just kidding. It is... Welcome! Welcome, welcome, Sepsidin. I mispronounced that absolutely terribly. So please do let me know how I uh, would be best to pronounce your name. Otherwise, um... I think he is do it. Is the C a hard C or a soft C? It's not much with the no loitering sign in the village. Oh, probably. So I've been over there a few times since um, without that omen on me, and guaranteed there are no villagers left anymore. So I'd have to breed them up and boat them over if I wanted to repopulate that village. 
I don't really see the point, but it was nice. That's actually one thing I thought about um, having having my uh, Ouyang put into the game would be kind of amusing. Would be um, if you've depopulated a village for some reason but didn't tear the village down, whatever it is that you know triggers the game to think it's a village. I would love to see it either a repopulate from um, something moving in, such as like we've got a couple options there. I mean, you could have an actual village full of illagers, so basically turn it into an outpost, or um, you could have it maybe the wandering trader at some point just stops wandering, or even if you don't want it being a villager style NPCs. If you depopulated a village and it's rather literally an abandoned village, then maybe it should actually start becoming decrepit and falling apart like an, like an abandoned village and potentially have things like spiders and whatnot move in. Or um, as much as I would dislike it, you know, have it populated by like zombie villagers or something. A whole village full of zombie villagers that recognize they used to be villagers, but Obviously, they can't go back to regular village anymore. And if you are normal and you come in, they try to eat your face to make you go away. S something lifelike would be kind of fun. <laughs> I'm laughing, creep. At the uh, we can they've been up to no good. Yes, they solemnly swore they were up to no good. I'm sure, they cannot have mischief managed. I was actually thinking about um, one of our nearby, we jokingly sometimes call them Rainbow Theaters. I don't know why they, they got that nickname, but the Cheap Theater, um, the Film Theater near us, has a sign up right now that says on the 25th, they're hosting a Harry Potter marathon. Now, if that means they're playing all eight movies, that's well over a day. Um, it interferes, interferes with Stream Weekend, and it's not conducive to actually spending time being a family human being, like a parent. But, as a fan of Harry Potter, that would be so much fun to go to in costume. Even though it's the, the cheap theater and generally nobody wears costume anymore. But it would just be a blast. I mean, the theater has a, another sign advertising now with butterbeer. I thought was kind of funny. Like, I don't know what company that they're, they're selling or if they make it themselves in-house, which I sort of doubt. But it'd be kind of funny to, to order butterbeer at the movie theater. If Wandering Trader finally settles down, headline news. True! But then you'd come up and it would look like one of those corner store shopping malls with... It'd be... Um, up here we call them strip malls, where every little shop has an external entrance and there's no internal entrance there. Like an open-air mall, I guess. It's probably better. I find that the Wandering Trader has, like... The, the corner store shop with all your needs, same as you would usually. Wandering Trader Rental Llamas. Or no, actually not Rental Llamas, what would it be? If he settled down, would it be Wandering Trader's Used Llamas for sale? Llamas, it's like a, that's like a llama pet shelter. The villagers love, or illagers love to visit. So I'm, I'm sometimes wondering if the fact that we have a village slightly affects the, um, not the spawn rate, but the spawn locations of villagers. I've always wondered that. If the, if Moyang built into the illagers the, the lore portion, that unless you've got a raid, for the most part, illagers check out towns and watch them, but don't actually, you know, bother them. And then... When you, of course, when you start a raid, there's all kinds of issues. But I wonder if they kept the lore that illagers were basically the ones that were started out as um, kicked out of a village, but didn't remain that way because they, well, of course, lack of breeding would mean that they start looking weird. They don't get new genetics. But that's that's me putting far too much. Um, Real world, real world personification on a video game. It's it's something I bug my kids about, 
and I always laugh inside when um, I'm watching a video about you know, the lore in a, in a science fiction world where the people producing it, producing the videos, don't have to actually talk about and now for something completely for different. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I slept recently. So let's give it a couple nights and see if I can survive without being knocked off my perch by um, phantoms. Yes, sure. Go with that. Okay. Lego time. Let's get straight to it. Oh, right. Right. So we're finishing off the roof. Okay. And it's going to be added to the base. We are very, very close to the end of this build. So uh, when we get to that point, the next person to redeem a Lego build at that point, unless it's a server restart, will get to choose what the next build is. So I will at that point show the options and people get to tell me what they want. And if nobody responds, then I just choose off the bat. I don't have a favorite one. That's why I'm not just going ahead and deciding. Okay, so this, we are actually, you got the last okay. steps, Fantastic Trout Fox. So we have the tower gets this piece put on, and it's got some janky studs. Probably won't stay on very well. Let's see if we can get these two to cooperate. We need to go vertical, sorry for the camera angle. In your face. There we go. Okay. So we've got a lovely little tower. This thing is huge. Like, it's taller than what... We can see. Sideways? There we go. And I have to do the last bit sideways anyways, because the funky little stud... Oh! The funky little stud that we had put on the side of the rectangular section of the building. There we go. This section of the tower. Actually, you're supposed to snap into the side of the other tower. Got the whole thing side by side. And then, really all you do is you put the kids in it, and that's it. So, yeah. That's the end of that build. So we've got... Let's see if I can get it to work vertically or horizontally on the table so you guys can see here. So, I know you can't see much of the top of the tower. That's semi-intentional. Just give me a glance on your shoulder. Yep, yeah, I'm going to frame about as much as I'm going to get. So we've got that, and then we've got a few. This will open. I'm assuming... Yeah, they don't... In a lot of the pictures on the box, they don't even put Fluffy in the building because it takes far too much space. You know, I think for the purposes of storyline, oh no, we've only got one hole on the other side of the building. Okay, later on I might make a couple of adjustments to make sure this thing will actually snap together on the other side and uh, switch the tower to the other side. I think because they've got the Fluffy panel opening here, but then Fluffy would have his tail in with the um, devil's snare, so that just doesn't really work, but in any case, so they've got Fluffy in, let's see if we can make him stand, no, can't make him stand sideways, so they've got him inside the tower, I can make, make him fit, he's huge, he's huge, wow, okay, there, and then we've got some scared kids, pull Fluffy out, so he's huge, Go. Uh, we got some scared kids. One, two, and three. And then we've got our harp. It soothes Fluffy to sleep. When the harp stops playing, he wakes up and we have problems. So, all good. Just before I switch back, I will drag over the other boxes. Give me one second. Should have taken photos of this, but I didn't expect to be done so soon. Okay, so we've got... These won't show too well, so they're going to be a little bit uh, blurry, I suspect, and probably reflecting light. But we've got a, a big suitcase. No, we can do that one. I got a square. We've got a big suitcase we can do with a magical trunk. We get to choose the house, although I, I will have people helping choose the inside. But the outside, I think I'm going to do with the multi-house color, because I actually like the way that looks. Even though it's kind of janky. So we can do different things inside it, and people will be able to make votes on what they want to have 
happen because there's three different choices that we can make, but it doesn't mix well together. Okay, so there's that option. Then we've got another in the series of books where they open up. Yeah, so, so it doesn't show too well on the back, but then on the... There we go. So this is this what is it would open up to inside. And that's Professor Trelawney with her divination class. Uh, Professor Trelawney was played in the movies by Emma Thompson. So if, if you haven't seen the movies, that gives you a rough idea of what the face looks like. Well, oh, sort of. She had incredibly thick bottle rim glasses, and in multiple interviews it said she absolutely hated them because they made her kind of dizzy. And then the last option is yet another one of the, of the book locations. But on the back of this one is the uh, Professor Moody class in the dark arts. Um, so we actually don't have a dark arts classroom so far. We uh, only have the Slytherin potions room. Alrighty, so I'm just going to leave those th leave those thoughts for you guys, and uh, head back to the last couple of minutes of choppity chop. And then I will sign ourselves off. Live. Well, I didn't get knocked off the pillar. That's a good start, but I got skeletons down below. Uh, why I went quite so high? Not really sure. Lego, Lego, Lego. Yeah, the books are cool. So there's two different books to, to choose from. And then there's the uh, the classroom trunk, which is kind of funky. So I'm gonna get, have to get myself off the pillar. Maybe that's what we're gonna spend the time doing. How do I have? Oh, hello. Ah. Oh. Splat. Another one. Splat. But very different angle to be shooting things from. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> an entire family of zombies, zombie babies. So I guess one of those holes down there is a problem. Um, what we need to do to choose the next one, Kreef, is just be the next person to redeem. So, if, but I mean, if, because you're a completely different time zone, if you want to uh, DM me your suggestion in Discord, that's an option as well. And that way I, I know what, what you were interested in. Should it happen that um, the next scheduled LEGO uh, session due to server restart happens when you're not online? So like if I don't happen to catch you in stream, before the halfway point on Thursday, then it would be, um, then when the server restarts, I do a Lego break. Wow, that's just a few baby zombies. I don't really want to be down there. A couple of parents as well, but it's quite the family. Okay, I think what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm down a couple more. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's close enough. And then I can get over to a tree if I need to. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a great view. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming by. I want to say thanks to Kreef and Tis for Truth for dropping by. And uh, we've got PB Zerk and ZZ Zerk. And we've got our new follower. Um, if you and that was something completely different. completely different. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So, first off, where am I here? Oh, and so if you don't tell me otherwise, it's going to be Sab. I think it's going to go with that. We'll just see how that goes. If you want something different, please do message me. I don't know if you said as much. But Kreef, you claimed a Lego step. Do you want me to do it now, or do you want me to do it a, a different day? It's up to you. I don't mind going long if you prefer to start the next bag. Next. Once you can get your vote in. Let's go. Dark Arts Classroom. Sure. Okay, so I did that, build a step. And I'm going to check off Kreef's. You want Dark Arts Classroom. Okay, we'll just go along a couple minutes just to be able to do that, and I will see you right over the Lego table. Unboxing. 
unboxing time. Mad Eye Moody in the Dark Arts classroom. Hogwarts moment, defense against the dark arts with Mad Eye Moody. So it looks like we're going to get another Hermione Granger in this one, as well as Neville Longbottom and Professor Moody. Which just means that it's a good thing then, uh, I don't know how well we can see this, but it's a good thing then that the one that came with Fluffy, I went with the frightened face. So that we don't end up with too much uh, similarity. See, you get ones over there, extra bits over on that side. Oops, I just dropped them down on the floor. That's okay, I'll grab it after. So, unboxing game, yay! Oh, there you are. Some of them come with little like thumb press zones. So, I like to use those when we've got them, but not all of them do. There we go. All right. Give me just one sec. <clears throat> Okay, I just looked over my shoulder and I did mute the other mic, so we shouldn't have Echodel. Alright, so this one has two bags and a lot of bits and bobs, so we're not going to worry about knolling, that's for people who have the time. But let's pull it out. We've got a nice little book. Now I can do this um, digitally and pull up the Lego thing online if that's something that you guys would prefer seeing me do and add another screen that shows you what page I'm on digitally. I can do that. Um, I'm not sure how well that will look technically, but I can do a test run on that one for a Fantastic Sherlock, for Fantastic Sherlock box. Okay, let's start. Put bag two away for now. Open up bag one. Lots of crinkly noises. Floors are great. Okay, Fluffy, get out of the way. I'll clean up this desk afterwards so that I can actually see what I'm doing for next stream. Great. So, as per usual with these types of sets, they want us to start with the outside. But, strangely enough, it does want us to make characters first. Interesting. So we have Hermione and half her head stuck together. That's okay. Makes it easy to find. Hermione's head. Uh, Hermione's body. Her jacket is different than that of Neville's. Which is helpful. Good. Neville's body and head. And he likes dark arts sometimes, so I will give him the smiley face for now. Okay, piece on the floor. Alright, let's open up the last bit so we can get Neville's hair. And some legs, it looks like. Fantastic Shock Fox bet wrong, huh? I don't know, you can't go wrong with Lego. Can't definitely can't go wrong with Lego. Anyway, okay, so we got I'm not sure what we see this in screen. Yeah. Okay. We'll just We've got half of Hermione. We've got just about half a Neville. Half a Neville? That just sounds really odd. I don't think I'm saying half a navel. Meaning your belly button. Okay, so these ones are a bit of a newer design. They still have short legs, but they're a little bit taller than the old ones, so they can actually articulate the legs. And I can bend them in weird positions and stuff. Whereas the previous ones that were shorter characters, not by much though, just a little, um, by taking that hinge out and making it not articulating legs, the characters are a little taller. They also changed Hermione's hair to, the, to a different version um, than the previous one. So the, uh, while there's uh, an evolution in her hair in the movies, there also is in the Lego. Um, I'm not sure which one I like better. 
to be honest with you. The movie version, still, even though her hair was wild in the first movie, they tamed it down a lot for the second and subsequent movies. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what Fantastic Sherlock Fox would have bet on for um, Lego kit selection. Now, that is another option, is I could have actually run a poll or something for that, but it really wasn't worth it. Okay, so you're going to get more than that. Let's see, we've got the back of a book. Let's see if I can find the front of the book in short order. <laughs> or the front. There's the cover. Found the cover. Now, where it is. Hmm. We're supposed to find the flat tile that goes inside the book, and I'm not easily spotting it. Oh, there it is. And it says on it in very, very, very tiny writing, The Dark Mark, and it shows you the dark mark. But that's all that you can actually read in it. And then it tells you to close the book. So I'll just set that aside. There are two characters. So let's turn the page so we get cheesy little bring. And we actually start building something. So it looks like it's going to be a desk bench, and this looks odd. Um, okay. In previous uh, instruction books, they don't have a character on the corner of the page, but this one does. So I see them moving along. I show you, it's like a progress bar. You can see as I flip through that she moves across the page and then in the set she's starting in the center so it's like a progress bar it's not meant as a flip book if, but just to show you how close you are to the end if I can get that part to show on camera then I will do so but I don't know if I'll be able to reliably get that on camera I may have to put marks on my desk to so let me know where it is okay so I think Kreef you've got the selection we built the first two characters I think I'm going to leave the first building step itself for next stream. Um, just so everybody's aware, if you happen to be in the Whatever Wednesday streams, LEGO is still available. I'm more likely to get my backside handed to me if we do LEGO there, but that's okay. And uh, Thursday is when I'll be back doing more of the Minecraft. So I'll finish up on the other side and we'll see you there. Wow, you can hear that I've got the neighbors at the bottom. Just... Okay, I'm not in a place where I'm going to have a pro Ooh, problem. So let's pull this out of the way. Uh, actually, even easier. This one. We can see, still got the family at the bottom. Not moving. But there we are. Did a little bit of tree chopping today. Had some great people involved. And uh, Kreef got to choose the next Lego project. So I think that I'll call it a win-win-win all around. Wish you guys a great day. And let's just see where we are at. Okay, so 50-50 choice. We have Gruva or Foxy No-Tail. Does anybody have a preference? No preferences? Awesome. Okay, yeah, spicy orange juice would do the trick for sure. Let's, what do I have in here? Anything useful? No, oh, you can't pour milk on them. They won't shrink or something. Crazy neighbor. Yeah, well, I'm looking at it as if you block up the holes to the house, then you shouldn't have quite so many crazy neighbors. But being as I had five and they seem to have all come from down below, then I suspect I probably left a cave open and they just all spawned down there, though I've never personally seen so many babies all at once. That'll be interesting. Have a great day. Uh, if I don't see you before then, Kreef, sleep well. Yep. You're very welcome for the stream. So does anybody have a preference on who we go to or not really? Head to the end credits. All right, so once again, I 
can't talk today. Let's take this off. There we go. So I can see... We'll, we'll pull a, a romper room. Not romper room, sorry. Uh, I'll remember the kids show someday. But I saw... Dab, and I saw Kreef, and I saw Tis for Truth, and I saw PP Zerk, and ZZ Zerk, and Fantastic Sherlock Fox. And I probably missed a few lurkers, so if I missed you, hope you had a great time. Hope you, hopefully things were okay. And I've decided, because nobody else said otherwise, that today we are going to go to Foxy Notel for variety. I'm not sure what he's up to exactly, but it looks Minecrafty, so we're going to go with that. Please give him our best and enjoy yourselves. Have a great day. Mislift managed. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, I don't need you to sleep. 